Your Questions Bible Answers Presented by Lori Dharma You asked Why did God command mankind to abstain from blood? God commands that we abstain from blood because what it represents is sacred to Him. Health professional too found that there are sound medical reasons to avoid taking blood in any form even for surgery transfusions. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I myself have given it on the altar for you to make atonement for yourselves, because it is the blood that makes atonement by means of the life in it. Leviticus 17:11. Does blood transfusion violates God's command? The Bible commands that we should not ingest blood, so we should not accept whole blood or its primary components in any form, whether offered as food or as a transfusion. Scriptures in Leviticus 17:14 says, You must not eat the blood of any sort of flesh, because the soul of every sort of flesh is its blood. Anyone eating it will be cut off. God viewed the soul, or life, as being in the blood and belonging to him. Although this law was given only to the nation of Israel, it shows how seriously God viewed the law against eating blood, but to write them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from what is strangled, and from blood. Acts 15:20. Thus it is made clear that avoiding blood is as morally important as avoiding idolatry and gross immorality. Does God's law prohibiting the taking blood into one's body is a protection to those who obey it? A blood-borne disease is a disease that can be spread through contamination by blood and other body fluids. Blood can contain pathogens of various types, chief among which are microorganisms, like bacteria and parasites, and non-living infectious agents such as viruses. Three blood-borne pathogens in particular, all viruses, are cited as of primary concern to health workers by the CDC NIOSH, HIV, Hepatitis B, HVB, and Hepatitis C, HVC. What other blood-borne diseases can also be contracted? Many blood-borne diseases can also be contracted by other means, including high-risk sexual behavior or intravenous drug use. These diseases have also been identified in sports medicine. Since it is difficult to determine what pathogens any given sample of blood contains, and some blood-borne diseases are lethal, standard medical practice regards all blood, and any body fluid, as potentially infectious. Blood and body fluid precautions are a type of infection control practice that seeks to minimize this sort of disease transmission. Did you know several bloodless surgeries were performed by leading surgeons? During the early 1960s, American heart surgeon Denton Cooley successfully performed numerous bloodless open heart surgeries on Jehovah's Witness patients. Fifteen years later, he and his associate published a report of more than 500 cardiac surgeries in this population, documenting that cardiac surgery could be safely performed without blood transfusion. Ron Lappin, 1941-1995, was an American surgeon, who became interested in bloodless surgery in the mid-1970s. He was known as a bloodless surgeon due to his willingness to perform surgeries on severely anemic Jehovah's Witness patients without the use of blood transfusions. Patricia A. Ford, born 1955, was the first surgeon to perform a bloodless bone marrow transplant. Did you know several bloodless surgery can be performed by blood substitutes or alternatives? Preoperative techniques such as erythropoietin, EPO, 
or iron administration are designed to stimulate the patient's own erythropoiesis. In surgery, control of bleeding is achieved with the use of laser or sonic scalpels, minimally invasive surgical techniques, electrosurgery and electroconnery, low central venous pressure anesthesia, for select cases, or suture ligation of vessels. 13. Other methods include the use of blood substitutes, which at present do not carry oxygen but expand the volume of the blood to prevent shock. Blood substitutes which do carry oxygen, such as polyheme, are also under development. Contradictory, many doctors view acute normovolemic hemodilution, a form of storage of a patient's own blood, as a pillar of bloodless surgery but the technique is not an option for patients who refuse autologous blood transfusions. Do you know doctors worldwide now use blood conservation techniques? Article in the Wikipedia says bloodless medicine appeals to many doctors because it carries low risk of post-operative infection when compared with procedures requiring blood transfusion. Health risks appear to be another contributing factor in their appeal, especially in light of recent studies that suggest that blood transfusions can increase the risk of complications and reduce survival rates. Thus the recovery rate is faster with bloodless surgery, allowing the patient to leave earlier. Do you know each year thousands die as a result of blood transfusions? Many people view blood transfusion as life-saving, but blood transfusions are fraught with risks. Each year thousands die as a result of transfusions, multitudes more get very sick and face long-term consequences. So, even from a physical standpoint, there is wisdom right now in heeding the biblical command to abstain from blood. Acts 15 28, 29. Evidence shows that people who disregard God's law on blood often experience immediate or delayed harm, some even die from the blood. Those who survive have not gained endless life. So blood transfusions do not save lives permanently. Will blood transfusion could gain everlasting life? Most people who, for religious or medical reasons, refuse blood but accept alternative medical therapy do very well. They may thus extend their life for years. True Christians realize that even with the best of medical care in the finest of hospitals, at some point people die. With or without blood transfusions, people die. Death is a fact of life today. People who disregard God's law on blood often experience immediate or delayed harm from the blood. Some even die from the transfused blood. Still, as all of us must realize, those who survive the transfusions have not gained everlasting life. Through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because they had all sinned. Romans 5.12 Why did Israelites were to sacrifice blood of animals on altar? As highlighted earlier, God told all mankind that they must not eat blood. Why? Because blood represents life. Genesis 9 3-6, he explained this further in the law code given to Israel. At the time the law code was ratified, the blood of sacrificed animals was used on an altar. Exodus 24 3-8, the soul of the flesh is in the blood, and I myself have put it upon the altar for you to make atonement for your souls. Leviticus 17:11. He told the Israelites that by means of animal sacrifices offered to him, they could acknowledge the need to have their sins atoned. Leviticus 4:4 to 7, 13 to 18, 22 to 30. In that code we are reminded that all humans are imperfect, we are sinful. Whose blood that really can saves lives? Animal sacrifices was what God asked of Israelites back then, not what he asks of true worshippers today. 
yet it has vital import for us now. In the Bible God promised that he would eventually provide one perfect sacrifice that could fully atone for the sins of all believers. This is called the ransom, and it focuses on the sacrifice of the foretold Messiah, or Christ. There is one God, and one mediator between God and men, a man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a corresponding ransom for all. 1 Timothy 2 5, 6 Is Jesus' sacrifice is the only means by which God delivers, or saves, humankind from sin and death? Yes. The Apostle Paul explained about the ransom, by means of him, Christ, we have the release by ransom through the blood of that one, yes, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his undeserved kindness. Ephesians 1 7 See, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. John 1 29 Do you highly esteem sacrificial blood of Jesus? The law was God's gift through Moses. So Paul reminds us that if unrepentant violators of that divine law received capital punishment, death, how much more deserving of punishment are those who contemptuously neglect God's greater gift through Jesus Christ, the greater Moses? Those who desecrate the Son of God as their Savior and despise His sacrifice are in line for the second death a severe punishment with no hope of a resurrection. Revelation 21 8, Deuteronomy 13 6 10, 17 2 7. The Bible emphasizes that we must avoid any course that would amount to trampling on the Son of God and esteeming His blood as of ordinary value. Only thus may we keep a good relationship and peace with God. Hebrews 10:29, Colossians 1:20. How much greater punishment do you think a person will deserve who has trampled on the Son of God and who has regarded as of ordinary value the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, and who has outraged the spirit of undeserved kindness with contempt? Hebrews 10:28, 29. Can we gain everlasting life by means of Jesus' blood? Yes, by means of Jesus' blood, we can gain full and lasting forgiveness of our sins. The Apostle Paul wrote, Since we have been declared righteous now by his blood, shall we be saved through him from wrath? That is how lasting life can be saved by blood. Romans 5 9, Hebrews 9 14. The scriptures describe Christ as the one who loves us and who loosed us from our sins by means of his own blood. Revelation 1 5. John 3:16 Since we have been declared righteous now by his blood, shall we be saved through him from wrath? That is how lasting life can be saved by blood. Romans 5:9 After knowing the truth, are you willing to obey God's command to abstain from blood? God's people refused to sustain their lives with blood, not because doing that was unhealthy, but because it was unholy, not because blood was polluted, but because it was precious. Wise, then, for us to take to heart all of God's requirements. That includes obeying His commands about blood, not misusing it even in medical situations. We thus will not live just for the moment. Rather, we will manifest our high regard for life, including our future prospect of everlasting life and human perfection. If anyone does commit a sin, we have a helper with the Father, Jesus Christ, a righteous one. And he is a propitiatory sacrifice for our sins, yet not for ours only but also for the whole world's. 1 John 2 1, 2 Do you know soon mankind will never be afflicted by sickness, old age and death? Jehovah God long ago gave assurance that by means of Christ all the families of the earth can bless themselves. Genesis 22:18. that blessing includes restoring the earth to a paradise. Then believing mankind will no longer be afflicted with sickness, aging, 
or even death, they will enjoy blessings that far exceed the temporary aid medical personnel can now offer us. We have this marvelous promise, he will wipe out every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more, neither will mourning nor outcry nor pain be any more. The former things have passed away. Revelation 21:4. Can idols, saints, Virgin Mary and other forms of worship will redeem us from our inherited sin? No. The Bible's direct answer is, there is only one mediator between God and mankind, himself a man, Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2 5. Not Mary, saints or dungy idols can intercede on behalf of man only Jesus the Ransomer can redeem us from our inherited sin. Jesus also told his followers, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14 6. Now you know God's commands regarding blood. Would you like to know more about the true God Jehovah and his purpose for mankind? End of this wicked system is near for God's kingdom to rule mankind. You can get to know God personally by learning about him and taking steps to please him before the end come. God will then draw close to you. James 4:8. The Bible assures us that he is not far off from each one of us. Acts 17 27. Bible also says, without faith it is impossible to please God well. Hebrews 11 6. Genuine faith is based on knowledge. Romans 10 17. So study the Bible and prove to yourself that you can trust God and obey all his commandments. Yes. By means of Jesus' blood, we can gain full and lasting forgiveness of our sins. The Apostle Paul wrote, Since we have been declared righteous now by his blood, shall we be saved through him from wrath? Romans 5 9, Hebrews 9 14. Jehovah's Witnesses would be happy to study the Bible with you, to get to know the true God Jehovah and his purpose for his mankind redeemed by his Son Jesus Christ. Click the link in the description to access the introduction to Bible study brochure and enjoy life forever. Thank you for watching our inspiring video. Our videos are made for educational purpose only. Subscribe to my channel, to watch more of our videos on Bible Truths. Like. Share. Subscribe. Feedback. Pay constant attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, of by doing this you will save both yourself and those who listen to you. 1 Timothy 4, 16 Watch more inspirational videos in my channel.